This article here is an example of Barack Obama. In my opinion, he's definitely not a Christian. He does show uh, partiality, it would seem to be, to Islam. But I wouldn't necessarily call him a Muslim. What I would call him is a, is a rebel, like a devil was, in direct opposition to God, like the devil was. So I would essentially call Barack Obama a Satanist. Uh, whatever God wants for man, Satan does not. And this article is about how Obama has advanced transgender rights. In this photo here, as you can read, this is the activist and prominent AIDS leader, trans transgender activist and AIDS, prominent AIDS leader, Diego Sanchez, who is a legislative assistant to the openly and admittedly gay Barney Frank, Democrat in Massachusetts. And <clears throat> they have quite a few of the that kind of lifestyle that reside in San Francisco. So, as you can see, the AP from there. He is Obama's established his bona fides as a gay and lesbian rights champion when he endorsed same sex marriage. Stead steadily extended his administration's advocacy to the smallest and least accepted band of the LGBT rainbow, the transgender Americans. With little of the fanfare or criticism that marked his evolution into the leader, Newsweek nicknamed the first gay president, Obama became the first chief executive to say transgender in a speech, to name transgender pol political appointees, and to prohibit job bias against transgender government workers. Also in his first term, he signed hate crime legislation that became the first federal civil rights protection for transgender people in U.S. history. Since then, the administration has quietly applied the power of the executive branch to make it easier for transgender people to update their passports, obtain health insurance under the Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare and is definitely not affordable, get treatment at VA facilities, seek access to public school restrooms. Yeah. Public school restrooms and sports programs. Just a few of the transgender specific policy shifts of his presidency. He's been the pr best president for transgender rights, and nobody else in the, is in second place, says Maria Kiesling, executive director of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Said this is Obama, who is the only president to invite transgender children. Get that? Transgender children. What kind of parents do they have to participate in the annual Easter egg roll at the White House. Religious conservative groups quick to criticize the president for his gay rights advocacy have been much slower to respond to the administration's actions. The leader of the Traditional Values Coalition says there is little recourse because the changes come through executive orders and federal agencies rather than Congress. The latest wins came this month when the Office of Personnel Management announced that government contracted health insurers could start covering the cost of gender reassignment surgeries for federal employees, retirees, and their survivors, ending a 40-year prohibition. Two weeks earlier, a decades-old ruling prevented Medicare from financing such procedures was overturned within the Department of Health and Human Services. Unlike Obama's support for same-sex marriage and lifting the don't ask, don't tell ban, a la Bill Clinton, on openly gay troops, the White House's work to promote transgender rights has happened mostly out of the spotlight. Some advances have gone unnoticed because they also benefited the much larger gay, lesbian, and bisexual communities. That was the case Monday when the White House announced that Obama plans to sign another executive order banning federal contractors from discriminating against employees on the basis of their sexual orientation or gender identity. 
In other instances, transgender rights groups in the administration have agreed on a low-key approach, both to skirt resistance and to send the message that changes are not a big deal. Said Barbara Cyperstein, who in 2009 became the first transgender person elected to the Democratic National Committee. It's quiet by design, because the louder you are in Washington, the more the drama, said Cyperstein, who helped organize the first meeting between White House aides and transgender rights advocates without the participation of gay rights leaders. The 2011 meeting came 34 years after Jimmy Carter's administration made history by meeting with gay rights groups. Obama's cabinet and federal agencies have followed up with actions significantly expanding transgender rights without congressional approval. He doesn't seek the approval of anyone because it's like a monarch with a dictator. For instance, Health and Human Services said in 2012 that it would apply the non-discrimination provision of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, to investigate federally funded health plans and care providers that refuse to serve transgender individuals. Earlier this year, the U.S. Education Department informed public schools that under its reading of Title IX, the 1972 law that bans gender discrimination in education, transgender students are entitled to federal civil rights protections. The information was included in a memo on schools' obligations to respond to student-on-student -student sexual violence. Obama has made clear the guidance has potentially broad implications. Title IX is a very powerful tool, he said last week. The fact that we're applying it to transgender students means they are going to be in a position to assert their rights if and when they see they're being discriminated against on their college campuses. Meanwhile, religious conservative groups' opposition to transgender advocacy has trickled in. The Traditional Values Coalition has lobbied against a bill that would provide federal workplace protection for gay and transgender people by warning it would require schools to permit teachers to remain on the job amid, tra amid gender transitions. The group president, Andrea Lafferty, said no one should mistake the absence of vocal opposition for acquiescence. There are other people who are concerned about these things, definitely. I think America is just overwhelmed right now. Everybody is going to have to take a step back, and that step back is going to be this November. The stage was set for Obama to become a champion of transgender rights when the LGBT community split over an earlier version of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act that Lafferty's group was fighting. In the fall of 2007, openly gay representative Barney Frank <clears throat> pursued, with the blessing of the nation's largest gay rights group, legislation prohibiting discrimination against gays and lesbians, but not transgender people. As Frank put it plainly, there was not enough Democratic votes to get a trans-inclusive law through the House. Transgender advocates who had lobbied for legal recognition of same-sex relationships were livid and persuaded more than 100 civil rights groups to oppose a bill that left transgender rights for another day. The community was forced to decide, where are you going to stand, recalled Diego Sanchez. And that's the picture of this article. Who was the first openly transgender person appointed to the DNC's platform committee and later became the first transgender staff member on Capitol Hill as Frank's top senior policy advisor. At the 2008 Democratic Convention, where Obama was nominated, 28 years after the party pledged to fight discrimination based on sexual orientation, language is added to accomplish the same for gender identity. As President, Obama has embraced the task of putting that pledge into practice, said Sanchez, now the national policy director of parents, families, and friends of lesbians and gays. It seems it's easier for voices to be heard once you're already in the room. What has changed is who is listening. So this is just an example of the lawless, reckless example set by the highest office in our land. Now, 
we can come into the book of Leviticus and you can read the whole thing. Chapter 18. But what does this say? You will not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Your creator is telling you not to do it. That he sees when you do. And it is abomination which has a punishment that goes with it when he sees these things going on. And now you've got, you've got that, like I just said before, the moral decay of the people in America. These groups, these segments of people that have fallen away into such a lifestyle that in the eyes of the Creator, He is seeing they're engaging in His Word, abomination. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So, the, so your nation gets a bad grade. Your nation gets a punishment. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. He should therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. So what we're doing nowadays is done been done before. And judgment was passed. And it wasn't a good time for the land and the people engaging in that conduct. But the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. Whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. So you see the point I'm trying to make? Not only is there greed and murder and adultery, covetousness, all different kinds of sins. And, and there's a difference between, it's sin is sin, but there's a difference between knowing it is and saying it's still okay and engaging in it and then Not meaning to, but you did, because you realize later on that you did, and you're sorry for it, and you pray to be forgiven about it, and you turn, try to keep turning away from it and not doing it anymore. Well, sad to say, America, you've got a big sect of people doing lots of wrong things, and they're not turning away. So... God is judging this country against this country overall. So the faithful have to pray for everyone, even the, even the other people that are willfully engaging in sin. We've got to try to get them to turn it around, even when it looks like it's not going to. We still have to keep praying for them. Because like I said before, every soul is precious. And we don't want any one of them to be lost. It's up to them to turn it around. It's up to us to try to get them to turn it around and continue to pray for their eternal salvation. 